Hey everyone, welcome to the Functional Bodybuilding Lab. I'm so excited to give you a tour of this beautiful new space. Over the past 10 years, I have been involved in opening up four different public gyms, two home gyms, and now this private functional bodybuilding lab. Every single iteration of gym that I have been involved in building has had a different purpose. We've had group class gyms, we've had individual design, personal training gyms, and now this space where we're gonna be researching functional bodybuilding methods and creating excellent content to hopefully educate you more on how to bring these tools and these methods right into your fitness journey. So what exactly goes into building a functional bodybuilding laboratory or gym? I'm gonna show you all the pieces that we have here, but first I wanna give a big special thank you to Aleco Sport, the company that helped make this dream gym and this dream training studio come to life. So thank you very much for your support and partnership with Functional Bodybuilding. Let's get into the tour. So on a day-to-day -day basis right now, the Functional Bodybuilding Lab is a training space for Functional Bodybuilding employees, myself, and a place to bring in friends and family to put our methods to the test. So that's our purpose now with this space. You have to be thinking about what the purpose of your gym space is really all about when you're thinking about the layout. So talking about layout, we are not trying to facilitate 20 people working out at one time, at least at this moment in life. We're thinking about five, six, seven people at most training at a single time. So when thinking about where to put pieces of equipment, we'll go look at the rig that we have over here. It wasn't essential that we had 10 stations for squatting. We have three to four stations for squatting. Similarly, we have two pieces of cardio equipment for each type of cardio machine that we use. When you're maybe building out your own gym, you want to take into consideration what's the end goal? Who am I trying to service when I'm thinking about how much equipment to have and where to space it so that the flow feels really good? All right, this is a centerpiece for us uh, at the lab. It is this Aleco uh, pull-up rig and squat station. I absolutely love all of the features that we have built into this, and I want to show you some of them now. First off, we have four squatting stations so that we can be performing you know, a combination of squats, maybe on this side bench press. Uh, even if you're just one person lifting, it's nice sometimes to have options to set up different stations. So the four squat racks each have pull-up stations above, and some of these pull-up stations are unique. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and show you this one because it's got an adjustable handle system that is absolutely innovative and is excellent for getting different widths of grip when you're doing your pull-ups. So just with a pull of a pin, these handles will move into different positions. We have swivels so we can get wide grip, narrow grip, neutral grip, pronated, supinated, all kinds of pull-ups right up here, right above the squat station. We've got two wall ball targets facing out into this open space right here. So it makes for a great place to do wall balls combined with rowing, running, biking. There's actually mirrored rings on either side of the rig. So perfect for two people that are trying to use all the features at the same time. Another feature that I really love about this is this adjustable pull-up bar that is great for pulling out and moving to different heights. When my kids come into the gym, they love to swing on this. I'll put it low. When you're doing body rows, it's a great thing to put at a low station. You can get good horizontal pulling. And then of course, if you want to go a little bit higher or somebody who's a little bit shorter, like my wife wants to come in and do pull-ups, this thing adjusts super easy for her. I'm going to get into talking about barbells and plates and accessories, but this is one accessory that I really, really like. This is a uh, barbell collar uh, clip, plate clip, that has an open end to it, and it can slide right on the end of any barbell and lock into place, and it is, it's extremely, extremely secure. But the other thing I love about it is that they thought of this, a magnet so that you can keep it right on your squat rack next to your squat station. Okay, this is an absolute non-essential, but something that I really love and I've always wanted. I used to knock the Smith machine for being non-functional, but as I've grown older and wiser, and as we're looking to take functional bodybuilding methods and really bring together lots of great training principles, concepts, and pieces of equipment, 
I've learned that there's a tremendous value to the Smith machine, but I couldn't justify getting just a Smith machine until I realized that they made a Smith machine that attaches right to this pull-up and squat structure. So this Smith machine attachment is extremely smooth, great for things like bent over rows, bench pressing, all types of squatting, single leg work, and as a matter of fact, one of the hardest workouts I ever did in my entire life was Smith machine split squats at a very slow tempo, just like that, almost to failure, combined with pull-ups. It was the workout that first made me throw up from weight training when I was 13 years old. So happy to have a Smith machine attachment from Aleco Sport on this rig for training purposes. Uh, a couple more attachments to the rig that I really like. I mean, having a, a, a dip bar station, a stationary dip, is one of the best shoulder exercises and chest developers that we have. I like the construction of this one. It slides on really easily. This has got a little magnetized pin to it, so it holds in position. You're not gonna worry about that sliding out. And then the hip thrust bench attachment is something that's actually really unique. This thing slides in and out relatively easy and locks into place like that. And if I spin around, put my shoulders on the bench, I can perform hip thrusts and it even would serve for me doing something like a seated press if I was doing some dumbbell work while I was also doing a bench press right in front of this uh, on this bench press station. Okay, the pull-up rig is basically a fully functional and operational gym in and of itself, but we have some other great tools and places for you to set up shop for your training in the lab. And the, the ones that I am really excited about are these power racks, um, AKA the strength station. The idea was build a station where you could bring everything into one place and do an entire functional bodybuilding session. There's weight plate storage. There's a kettlebell rack. We even have a dumbbell rack that we could put right in here and store the most commonly used dumbbells. Each station, and there's four with these two power racks, each, each strength station has its own pull-up bar. We can add attachments like ab slings, and we could even have a small box set up right next to each station so that just by grabbing a barbell, a plate, dumbbell, kettlebell, you can get your whole workout done in one space. What I think that this is actually extremely beneficial for is the personal trainer out there. If you're setting up a studio and you wanna do personal training, functional bodybuilding style, one thing I always disliked in the commercial gym was the sight of a personal trainer walking around the gym with their client, following them five to six paces behind them, sort of guiding them and meandering around the gym. It never felt personal and it always felt like the client was being kind of ushered around the gym in a way that wasn't uh, extremely supportive and uh, caring. So let's say you set up your client's station here. You, the personal trainer, are going and bringing things to them. You're making this feel like their secure, safe, confident place to get their workout done and to stay focused and not get distracted. It's also a great place for me personally, if I'm gonna do a training session in here, I can get almost everything done in this one space. Plus I've created and we've created enough square footage right in front of each strength station, additionally in front of the rig, that I could bring a rowing machine, a bike, a ski erg, a bench, anything I need, even perform Olympic lifts right in front. And I never really have to move more than five to six feet from my strength station. Every gym needs a set of dumbbells and the more complete that set of dumbbells, the more versatility you're gonna have in increasing your strength, doing progressions, uh, bumping up loads between sets. So we went ahead and we got this full set from five pounds all the way up to 100 pounds uh, dumbbells. These uh, particular dumbbells that were customized for FBB um, have a knurling on the handle and this metal handle feels uh, very much and almost identical to the barbell handles that Aleco makes. So a wonderful uh, grip, which makes a big difference when you're doing pulling exercises. There's nothing worse than a dumbbell handle that's too thick or too smooth and you can't get a good grip. 
that's going to impact negatively how well and how effectively you can actually perform exercises. So uh, a, a dumbbell set is extremely important. And then to go along with a dumbbell set, I'm a big fan of having a variety of different benches. Um, in functional bodybuilding, we do all kinds of different bench work, uh, from bench presses to prone rows to seated presses to incline, decline. And you can get away with having just a flat bench that you put boxes or you prop up on weight plates to create angles. Uh, but if you have the option and you have the opportunity to get yourself different types of benches, a flat bench is extremely useful. This incline bench is also extremely smooth and sturdy and secure. Nothing worse than a bench that's really wobbly and shaky. That's going to decrease force production and make it a lot more unstable when you're lifting. We also got a decline bench as well, which I think is probably one of the most advantageous positions for doing dumbbell bench press work. A decline dumbbell bench press work feels the best on my shoulders and gives me the best chest uh, stimulus of any of these different variations that we have. And then lastly, this is the prone row bench. The prone row bench is definitely not an absolute that you have to have in your gym. It's kind of a splurge piece of equipment. But what I like about it is that when we lay down face down onto a bench and want to do rows, your arms are never going to hit the ground. This one actually has a place to hook a barbell so that you can reach it easily to do prone rows and it easily adjusts up and down to any height if you have long arms or short limbs. You probably only need one barbell to have an effective training session. Fortunately, we have about seven different types of barbells here. I'm going to show you a couple of them. First is the Aleco hybrid bar. Great for doing a little bit of everything, power lifting, even functions in some CrossFit scenarios um, and some Olympic lifting. We've got the 15 kilo XF bar. And so this is a very versatile bar, 15 kilo bar, uh, great for Olympic lifting. This is also a 15 kilo bar, but it has the same diameter uh, grip as a 20 kilo bar, except for it's much shorter. So it loses some um, of the weight just by being a shorter barbell. This has been something that I've enjoyed playing around with when I'm doing barbell cycling for uh, certain conditioning workouts that we do inside of functional bodybuilding. It's also designed to sit on that prone row bench that I showed you earlier so that you can actually do barbell prone rows without something that's so long that you might lose some balance on either end. This is the traditional uh, weightlifting bar from Aleco. This is something that I've actually had for years. I do all my Olympic lifting with this. And if you, can, if you can see and you can get close, you can hear that it spins beautifully, which makes for really fun Olympic lifting sessions. And then lastly, we got a couple training bars. These things are uh, 10 kilos. And so great for people that are learning the Olympic lifts. And when we host uh, functional bodybuilding training camps in the future, we'll definitely be using these to teach different lifts, positions, and get you guys better at moving in functional bodybuilding. The last one, but certainly not least, is the open trap bar. And a trap bar is a great tool for teaching people how to pick things up off the ground safely. I like the neutral grip of it. This one in particular is terrific because it sits up on its side so that you can load plates on either end. And then when you're ready to lift, you can push it forward. The openness of one side of the barbell allows for it to be used for things like lunges, and for walking and carries. So really versatile trap bar. I highly recommend this if you can get your hands on it. No gym is complete without a full set of training discs um, and then also kettlebells. Kettlebell training is a big part of functional bodybuilding. We opted to go for the competition size kettlebells, which basically mean that all of these kettlebells are the same size in terms of diameter and height, but because of the different densities, you've got eight kilogram kettlebells, 12 kilogram kettlebells, all the way up to 32 kilograms. So the weight changes, the size stays the same, which means that the mechanics of how you're swinging, you're doing your cleans will always be about the same because the size of the bell isn't actually changing. Uh, we've got some medicine balls up top um, and other things that we have over here are, you know, magnetized brushes for our barbells some of our heavy jump ropes. And then on the end, we've stored some of our bands for 
like hip circles and glute activation drills, assisted pull-ups, and other, other mobility drills that we do uh, with big jump stretch bands. Also band-resisted deadlifts and bench pressing and things like that. A couple other tools that Aleko sent over that I was really interested in having in the facility, uh, the 45 degree back extension and the GHD. I use both of these probably two to three times a week each. Uh, I do a lot of uh, GHD sit-up work as well as um, GHD or glute ham raises on here, back extensions. And then this has probably been the most used tool that I have in this new facility outside of a barbell, dumbbell, kettlebell. Um, it has really given me access to working on my posterior chain strength, working on my hamstrings, and additionally working on my quadratus lumborum or QL strength and oblique strength because I have historically had some back issues and when I got introduced to this movement as a tool to help bulletproof my low back, I found it to be really effective so I use this thing all the time. It's great maintenance for my, for my back health and also posterior chain strength along with the GHD. So one of my missions with functional bodybuilding is to bring together methods and different pieces of equipment from all over the fitness industry into a single place that provides a lot of efficacy to the end consumer, to you. So trialing things that look like machine-based training or free weights, all of it can be useful if it's uh, dosed correctly and prescribed in the right way. There is no better exercise when it comes to thinking about isolation versus compound. There's a place for both of them at the right time, at the right place. We value compound lifts, we value isolation. When you do isolation exercises, what we're talking about is adding more stability and the ability to focus on singular muscle groups and contract them. When we talk about compound exercises, we're talking about less stability. Uh, the need and the requirement for the athlete to coordinate many different muscle groups together for a larger, um, more compound lift. So for that reason, we have a big blend of free weights at the Functional Bodybuilding Lab, as well as machines. Bringing machines in will allow us to isolate muscle groups or focus on things that are much more stable in the way of movement. Every single machine that we have here at the lab can be replicated in some way fairly closely with a free weight protocol. And while it's important for us to be able to deliver programs to people that don't have access to these machines necessarily, there is a large number of people viewing this that are very comfortable inside commercial gyms where these machines are ubiquitous. So here we are doing our research. I'm practicing what I preach on machines as well as free weights to make sure that we're delivering methods that actually work for you. So let's go take a look at the Atlantis strength machines that we brought into the functional bodybuilding lab. So this is a combination lat pull down, low row. We've got a couple adjustable pieces on here. If I pull the seat back, I can do seated rows. I push the seat back up. I can do lat pull downs. This is a great machine if you're learning pull-ups, if you haven't gotten your pull-up strength. So wonderful as an accessory to pull-ups and vertical pulling too. This is a hip thruster machine. Uh, while I showed you earlier the hip thruster bench attachment to the rig, so you can do hip thrusts uh, out over there on the rig. This is also a great way to just get an isolated glute and hip workout. I find that this has been a great complement to doing squatting and deadlifting workouts. I'll do some deadlifts or I'll do some squats. I'll come out and pump out a bunch of hip thrusts on here in a superset fashion, and it has been extremely effective. Uh, moving on over here to the biggest piece of equipment that we purchased, uh, this is the pivot press. And a pivot press is similar to a leg press. Now, the leg press, in my uh, opinion, has a one really great value, which I really like using it for, and that is getting a, a combination of a strength and a 
uh, stretch or mobility effort all in the same exercise. When I set up for this particular machine and I bring my legs out wide, what I have found is that I can get one of the most effective stretches in my hamstrings, glutes, and adductors with a really stable position. Bringing my torso close to my thighs in this, in this way, closing this angle, I can't really replicate in any other free weight or barbell exercise with as much safety and security as I can with this. So I'm looking forward to researching more about how this can be utilized with other functional bodybuilding exercises that we use and protocols. This is the Atlantis Strength Nordic Bench, probably the most effective tool that I've ever encountered to training the posterior chain, the hamstrings uh, in particular. It's uh, adjustable here. It's really easy to move around on wheels. It doesn't take up that much space and it is extremely potent when it comes to isolating the back of the legs. It's the best I can do. Um, if you don't have a Nordic bench, there are absolutely ways that you can uh, rig this up with free weights, putting your feet underneath the dumbbell rack, putting your feet underneath a heavy barbell with some added padding. But if you can get your hands on this, something that you can really give maximal effort with a great cushion underneath your knees and great cushioning underneath your ankles, that is gonna make it so much more effective and so much more easy to train to maximum effort when you're doing your Nordics. So I highly recommend it. Uh, have a look at how they uh, can get you one of those. We've got the dual cable machine here. I chose this one because it's got the built-in pull-up bar with different handles, different grips, also a ton of versatility in where you can position those cables. This thing gets a lot of use, something that I think is underappreciated and probably not given enough uh, attention in some of the functional fitness boxes that are out there. So if you can get your hands on a cable machine, I think it's a great tool to have as an accessory to all the free weights. This is an hip abduction adduction combo machine. So uh, definitely great for working glutes and um, adductor strength. We also have a hamstring curl combination leg extension machine. The hamstring curl, after I had just shown you to do those Nordics on that Nordic bench, I think the combination of those two provides a really powerful combination uh, for training hamstrings and getting a slightly different stimulus, more of an open chain versus a closed chain uh, dose response in those two different tools. Um, lastly is the uh, seated calf and the seated calf machine I have uh, kind of fallen in love with lately as a great way to help build um, knee strength. So getting into this position, strengthening my ankles with my knee over my toe, something that Ben Patrick taught me a lot about, something that I really wanted to have in this new facility. So a seated calf uh, raise goes really well with that Smith machine that I showed you earlier. The Smith machine can be uh, utilized as a standing calf raise uh, station so that we have two ways of training the ankles in plantar flexion. We chose to take up a big piece of real estate with this uh, black turf that we have here. It's kind of like almost carpet material, really smooth, and we do a lot of sled pushing and reverse sled dragging. That is a big part of functional bodybuilding. Plus this is a perfect place to be doing all of our farmer's carries, our kettlebell rack carries, our crossbody carries. So this ends up getting a lot of use as well. And it's right next to this suite of cardio equipment that we have that lines the wall all the way out to the garage door. We've got rowers, we've got treadmills, we've got bikes. In fact, we have two different types of bikes. We've got assault bikes, we've got Concept2 bike ergs, and then of course the ski erg. I am an absolute fan of using lots of different types of cardio equipment. I think that you can get by by just having one in your home gym or in your smaller facility. And I think it adds a tremendous amount of versatility to your training. If you can add two, a third, a fourth, training variety gets extremely, extremely expansive, which makes staying consistent, staying engaged and having fun with your training uh, that much easier, which is the name of the game to getting towards your goals is consistency. All right, I'm gonna to touch on a few more pieces of equipment that could definitely be at your gym or 
These are great home gym tools as well. So the Tib Bar, something I got introduced to uh, thanks to Ben Patrick, and it is made by the home gym guys out of Australia, and it is designed to train your anterior tibialis, which doesn't get a lot of direct work from anything else that most people are doing in their gyms. So I always have this thing loaded with about 25 to 35 pounds, pump out a set of 20 anytime I walk past it. From that same company, this is called the Nordic Bar. And just like a Nordic bench, you put this thing attached to any rig, drop a pad, a yoga mat, something underneath it, and you can perform in Nordics with your heels right underneath here. That's another great thing to have for your home gym if you've got a squat rack like this. Now I'm gonna look at the slant board. This slant board, which has got a bit of grip tape on it, and it's printed with our Persist Functional Bodybuilding logo on it. Uh, this is great for doing all kinds of slant board, heels elevated, cyclist squats, great for VMO training. I've used this a ton to uh, help get my, my own knees out of pain, but also add some versatility to the squatting that we do. Uh, the other tool that they sell is a step that has a six inch step, a four inch and a two inch step. And putting the slant board up on here, you can do things like Pollock step ups, or if you wanna have that off to the side, you can do things like Patrick step ups or Peterson step ups, great for knee training and also a great way to work on deficit drop lunges and things like that. So that gets used all the time. And then the last tool is called the uh, monkey foot. And this is from Animal House Fitness and it attaches on and you can do a variety of different hip flexor exercises or hamstring curls standing like this. That's a great warm up tool that I like to use prior to squat or deadlifting or hamstring sessions. So this combination of these four different tools or five different tools, they could definitely be sitting in your home for not that expensive a price. And they add a lot of versatility to your training to go along with the foundations of functional bodybuilding, which would be barbell work, dumbbell work, kettlebell work, and hanging pull-up work. Okay, that's the tour. If you have any questions, please drop them in the comments below. If you wanna check out any of this Aleco gear, please head over to aleco.com, give them a look. Things like the 45 degree back extension, the GHD, or maybe you wanna get one of these strength stations for your home gym, I highly recommend it. If you wanna go ahead and try some functional bodybuilding workouts, then guess what? You don't need to have a full gym with all of this equipment. We have minimalist programs that use body weight only. So head to the link in the description below, functionalbodybuilding.com. Try some of our Persist programming for free today. Thank you for joining me, and I hope you enjoyed seeing the Functional Bodybuilding Lab in all of its glory.